Welcome guys to the Mary Boozers channel again. Today we've got our free wing F86. You guys enjoyed us doing the airbrushing last week so much that we're going to do another one. Today we're going to be going over some of the grungy end of this airplane. We're going to do some bullet holes, show you how to make bullet holes. That'll be fun. We're also going to be talking about some of our wall art here. We've had some questions on the wall art. Uh, we'll probably start there. Um, giving it a few minutes for you guys to kind of funnel into the live stream at, uh, we'll talk about this as that happens um, for you guys that catch us on the replay so dad painted this picture here uh, about a year or two ago started on it finished it all up and then when we had the idea to switch the name of the channel to the Mary Boozers um, I actually sent this picture a photocopy of it I scanned it in and everything to Cali Graphics and she converted it into a graphic for me. And that's how we got our Mary Boozer emblem up there. It's off of this picture, actually. And she added the bombs in the 945. Super easy to work with Callie. She, she really treated us right on it. She doesn't charge a whole lot of money for what quality service she does. Um, she's also made us Mary Boozer stickers, which eventually we're going to be trying to get these to you guys. But they also made us little Mary Boozer stickers. Um, actually, here's a better one right here on the back of this iPad. I'm going to borrow this for just a second. So here's our little stickers we're going to be doing giveaways on and stuff. Uh, any of you guys that are at Joe Nall this year will have those. Then we have our Mary Boozers t-shirts. Yeah, we got our Mary Boozers t-shirts on today. Um, now, these pictures up here are pretty neat too. So, Mr. Miller, why don't you tell him about this since he's the one that made them. Okay, so back in the day, guys, back in the early 90s, when they started reproducing the A2 flight jacket, and when we lived in Big Spring, which was a Big Spring, Texas, which was about 60 miles from Midland, Odessa, and if you don't know what that meant, that the Confederate Air Force at that time, which is now the Commemorative Air Force, was doing a lot of the 50th anniversaries of World War II. So since Dad had flew on a B-24 and I had the original patch, I didn't want to use the original patch. So I started researching what it would take I'm to redo it. So with that, this picture here is actually my reproduction. It is a leather patch. I'm gonna bring it in so we can see it. Yeah. Okay. But but this is this is actually my the the Mary Boozers, the Boozer was with the Seventh Air Force, 30th Bomb Group, 392nd Bomb Squadron, which each squadron had their own patch, which you'd see on the A2. So instead of trying to use my dad's original patch that I had, I I reproduced the patch. Now you could put this on your A2, or I elected to do this. I, that is a leather 7th Air Force. This is the Air Force patch. Of course, I found a picture of the Boozer, actually with the being that they were in the South Pacific. The Boozer was actually, my dad started to fly on the Boozer from Saipan in December of 44. So anyway. That's what this is. The other one is something I always like. It was just something I always liked. The PD-2, everybody's always seen PD-2. And that was the uh, patch. I reproduced that patch because I always liked it. And I can't remember. what What is the squadron patch? What is the squadron? Mustang 8th Air Force 487th Fighter okay. Squadron. 487th Fighter Squadron. Now, here we go again. Leslie's got my original A2 jacket on, and the first patch that I actually reproduced is on the jacket right here. And then when we I gave the jacket to Wesley, and I reproduced the Mary Boozer, which it's pretty worn. I can redo it, but that, I've been wearing this jacket since I was probably like 15, 14 like. years old, so it's held up very well for. 15 to 20 years and I was a high school kid wearing this thing. We're kicking so. it around that I may offer, 
I actually have done uh, quite a few of these patches over the years and we're kicking around maybe that I will offer to sell these patches to you but we haven't come up with a price or or anything or how to pay pay us me or whatever so in the future possibly we'll be able to reproduce these for you if you want one I think they're very highly quality I wouldn't I wouldn't offer one if I didn't think it was quality. So, just a little bit of information about the arts in the background. Uh, I'm kind of an artsy fartsy guy, and, and that's the way it goes. But I'm getting better at talking with you guys because I feel like that I'm talking to you guys if you were standing at the field with us. Right. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the good news. So, guys, today we're going to get to our airbrushing now. Um, I was glad we got to share a little bit of that history with you of what we got going on. So today we're using our single stage uh, airbrush again. We've got our moisture track on the line as we discussed in the last uh, week's video. Um, using our standard little compressor, if you can see it right now. Yeah, you can. Um, moisture trap on there. We're going to have the gun set. Something I didn't tell you last week. These are regulators up here. You pop this up if you get this one. And you can adjust your pressure. I'm running my pressures at 41 PSI with this gun. With my other gun, I run around 22 PSI. So you just pop that up and turn it to adjust your pressure. We're going to be using our same uh, Tester's Black this week. And remember, you can always put more in the gun. It's hard to put it back in here. So, we're going to put a little paint in. I put... Just enough in there. You know, we're going to do a lot of black, so we put we put quite a bit in there. Can you see that, Lauren? Um, there yeah. we go. And uh, we're going to get this setting this up. You want to cut that in half, Dad? The scissors right over there. Try to get us in a good angle. What we're going to start out, I guess, with is dirtying up the panel lines. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. So we're dirtying up the panel lines, guys. So we all we got is notebook paper, kind of. Tapping paper. So, Lori, if you want to bring the camera in here, we're going to start right here on the wing. Dad, get ready with something to kind of hit if this splatters, because it's kind of shooting splatters today. There it goes. Just kind of got to get it cleaned out. All right, guys. Start on the paper and work your way out. And it is silver, so silver takes a little bit more to paint to really paint. see it. You you've got to really put her on there. There you go. We have six viewers, guys. Sweet, sweet viewers. Now, I'm as I showed you last if week, we got any comments or any questions? So I like a couple little streakies just randomly coming off of those panels. Take it all the way down in here to the yellow. Now the yellow doesn't take much. A little goes a long way when you hit that yellow right now. And that makes that line nice and sharp and pronounced. Now we, I had already done all the rivets on this plane prior to us doing this video. This was actually a gift to me from Wesley for Christmas. So no, we have not flown it. Best son ever, yeah, right? Someone Best in from Winnipeg, Canada. Winnipeg. Hey, hello, Canada. hello, Canada. I've crossed over right at Grand Forks, uh, North Dakota into Canada one time. It was very short. Woo, look at that splatter that came out. That's why you always start on here. Just in case it ever splatters like that. There is sometimes you'd like to have that splatter, but it's not always. Yeah, I'm going to take this out real quick. We took our gun apart today, and I've got an O-ring that came out, and I don't know where it came from. And I'm starting to wonder if that is where our issues are coming from right now. Needle looks good. Well, this is all kinds of cool paint in here. I don't feel like it's good enough. I would to do a tap dance, but tap there's, dance. there's no, well, to, uh, mm -hmm. we're kind of dead. Time passing. Oh, I'm sorry, on. guys. Yeah. 
Hey, it's part of live, unfortunately. We will, over a period of time, since Wesley's, uh, we're, we're going to there do we go. uh, some information more on the boozer. And if anyone has any questions, just throw them in the comments. We'll be happy to answer anything you have. I'm trying At least to keep to our a best ability. Like I said, take you some streaks always in the direction of the wind. It's kind of weird on the F-86 because uh, the wings are so swept on it. Uh, let's put some on the flap. Real light on here. We're not going super dirty this week on our F-86 either. Um, we are going to put bullet holes on it here in a little bit. I think we're just going to focus on the top for now. And you know what, guys? This gun is giving me some problems today. So I'm actually going to switch guns right now. Hopefully this one's a little better for me. Sorry. Mr. Miller, talk to him for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I said... Uh, why we name it's for you guys that haven't watched this. Why we named our channel the Boozers, Mary Boozers, is because of the B 24 my father flew on in World War II. So, hippies, huh? with that, we have been telling you that we will be share, sharing a lot of uh, more information about the B 24, its history that I know of, the photographs I have of it, and some of the stories that my father told. Now, my dad was a typical World War II veteran. He didn't say a whole lot about anything. Uh, I remember him saying, some guy that talks a lot about him being in the war probably didn't do anything. Uh, they did, the World War II veterans didn't really like to share their experience during the war because dad had some bad experiences and uh, actually lost a very good friend. So, you know, All right, much better. Anyway, back to back to this. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I switched guns, guys. I'm on my two-stage gun now, so push in for air, pull back for paint. The other one just wasn't painting right today. I hope you're say the Hippie 64 tuned in with you. Excellent, excellent. Welcome, Hippie. I know you were talking about coming yesterday. I'm glad to see you came in. So we got a gas tank right here. I always like to take and lightly start hitting the gas tank right there around where it would have been flowing out and start making it come out of there like it's dirty. Always in the direction of the wind. Just like that. What is this one? Ground here, that would have been for fueling. I'm gonna hit this one right here once again, just kind of some streaks. You don't got to ever be exact, guys, as we talked about last week. Just kind of dirt getting in places where dirt would get in. Now, I'm going to go on and set up for bullet holes. Well, well, we'll keep going. Let's do the other wing first. That's okay. I can show them this about this. Can you see over here real good? Yeah. yeah. Once again, come over here and start adding it in. <laughs> the oil sounds like Bob Ross. Happy little oil streaks. That's right. Happy oil streaks. Don't forget, happy oil streaks, guys. You know who Bob Ross is, Dad? Yeah, he's a painter. <laughs> Bob Roth, wasn't it? Not Ross? Yeah, it's Ross. come over here and see what Papa Boozer's doing. Now, oh. I never to pronounce this right. I'm going to have Wesley pronounce it. This is Citadel Null Oil. Null Oil. Null Oil. None. Actually, what it is, is, is you're going to put this on with a brush and, it, and it's to highlight your panel lines. To dirty up the panel lines. And show them this, too. Let's say, let's say, yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. you can take you some can air take and, and make that. this look like 
oil. oil has just run all down this yeah, line. Yeah, I really like to do it on the fuse down. He really likes that oil. Yeah. So we're not going to do that? it there. Yeah, but you can see it there. We're, let's let's do it over there on the fuse. Down. See we're, now he can just take it, streak it a little bit. Look, look, it's uh, not going to come completely off. See but. that? And then another thing, what you want to do is anyway, back to my paint you can here. dirty it up. You can dirty up the panel lines here, guys, like this, and it and it just brings them out. Or you can do one of these and do a streak like with your finger like that. Anybody see that? Just take it from the front and do do one of these. And leave Anybody it alone. hear the fan in the background? I want to make sure I don't need to turn it off or anything. Let me know in the comments. Yep. Well, you do have a new microphone this week, guys, too. Hopefully, y'all can hear us really well. We uh, went on ahead and dropped the money on getting some good quality equipment this week. Um, we had a good camera, but now we wanted a good microphone so y'all could actually hear what we were saying. It helps tremendously out in the wind for us this week. Our video this week is awesome. We flew that FMS 1500mm uh, P47 today, and it flew... Great. Thank you, Joe. Where do you get your non-oil from? Non-oil, actually, I just dropped it into the Pilot Ryan and uh, Captain Mike Amazon store. I get mine on Amazon. And uh, I did add the link this week. Uh, do you want to come around here and see me doing the guns? Yeah, yeah, do the guns. Uh, Deuces Wild RC says love the F-86 Mellow Jet. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was doing the guns and I didn't. I figured y'all might want to see it. So here I'm taking and putting a bunch of black up in the front half here, like the guns were firing. And then I take it and start working my way back with it. Laurie, could you move over this way just a little bit? You're blocking all that light. There you go. Okay. Free wing, motion RC sells it, guys. It does not come with the riv rivets all over it. We've done that, but all it takes is a little time with the Sharpie. And you too can have your F-86 looking like she just left South Korea. If you uh, look on our previous videos, if you go to our website, we showed you, we built a F-7F Tiger Cat. And all of that about how to do the riveting is on there. And it's also showing the uh, panel lines and stuff like that we're doing here also. So uh, look us up on the YouTube. Look at uh, F7F. Yep. Warbirds were not pretty, guys. Sorry, but... Uh, to to break your yep they wasn't pretty double check make sure I'm not running out of paint still got plenty can always add more if you do run out of paint Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been up there, definitely, man. We actually have a store right up there in Grand Forks. Uh, I worked for Border States Electric and would travel around to all the different stores, and that's what brought me to Grand Forks. I believe the uh, football team there is the Bisons in uh, Grand Forks, if I remember correctly. That is correct. So, like I said, we're not going to go crazy, crazy on all the streakies today. I always like to put them on the tail. Uh, back here, a few, a few, I'll bring that like that and streak them, bring them through. Hey, 
and I really like to that look but it's kind of hard to you know, you're not supposed to scratch the airplane when you're doing it but I get nervous with you guys watching so I don't really know and then I'll take it across the tail here you know like another that. thing and drag my finger across it like, like the yellow really shows this up guys now I'm going to show you another technique that's kind of neat these foam airplanes are painted in a water-based paint. Alcohol oh, yeah. breaks it down like crazy. Yeah. So, you saw me last week paint a couple brown panels on it. Well, this is an aluminum airplane, and even the last plane last week, it wouldn't have really turned brown. But it would oxidize. So, let's pick out a panel on here. We're going to take just very lightly, rub a little bit of this alcohol on this panel. And then we're going to take and rub it. I haven't tried it on the F-86 yet, but I imagine it's going to work right. Normally it does on any of these free-wing airplanes. It's going to be the one week that this doesn't work when I'm trying to show this to them. If you were trying to take it off, it'd take it off in a heartbeat. Well, usually it will dull well, it the will, paint. Yeah, and it, well, it needs to dry before it will. It'll, it'll show. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see if it does. But you could take that alcohol normally. And this is an old kit, so maybe the paint has changed formulas since these were built, too. Because this Freewing F86 has been out a long time. But I'll take it and rub that normally, and it'll take the paint right off and make it kind of like a milky color. Hey, Ryan's in here. Really helps a lot. Ryan Ramsey, are you here, man? Hanging out with us today? It says, what's up? Living the dream here. Yeah, living the dream. So I'm going to start on the bullet holes now. We're going to continue doing what we're doing, but while I have the black loaded in my airbrush, I'm going to do some bullet holes out here. So your first step on a bullet hole, where do you want them, Dan? Where do you think it would look good? Right, right in here? Like he hit, hit, he the, hit the gas tank? Yeah, well, okay, put them, <laughs> put them out here. Out here? Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to go crazy with these. We're going to draw us a little dot. Ryan says, living la vida loca. So a black dot. <laughs> All right. Hey, Ryan. I, I got off the, your channel last night before I told you that I was going to give you a present. Look for it in the mail. <laughs> Are you hearing it, Ryan? I can't see what he's saying because I'm over here. Without saying anything, hey, well, then, I, still typing. then I don't have to give it to him. <laughs> Is that enough bullet holes? How many you want? Yeah. He just popped in real quick. How many bullet holes you want? Well, they ought to have been in the line that way, but since they're shooting at me. What if he was flying like this well, and they shot him across there? No bullet holes can be bullet random, guys. Be you can make them straight that's, up that's and enough. down. You can make that's them left and right. Holes. Ryan says he hears you, Papa. Okay. All right. Well, the only problem is I can't figure out what to send you. Did you, uh, uh, did, or is he a, is he a fighter man or a bomber man? Do you like fighter aircraft? World War II now, I'm talking World War II. Excuse And guys, I'm just on the other side doing the guns, just like we did a minute ago. I just hit them real quick. I'm trying to get this color out so I can switch. Well, oh, say? I don't know what, what they're getting to see right let's now. See let's still let's, let's move them back up to us oh, before we do that. He says he hears you. He hasn't answered about the fighter bomber yet. Let me give him a second. They have to type it in. Um, and here, if you want to just okay. back up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually spin the airplane around real quick so I can get to this other side and dirty it. Ah, okay. On our cruise in stand. Thank you, Ryan, for the cruise in stand. Now, one of the things we've done on the bullet holes, you're going to paint that black dot first. Then you need to cut out some uh, little stars. If you can see them. You yeah, see them on here? 
So just out of a thin piece of paper, we've cut us out just so you know what we're doing. Everybody get an idea there. So you, just a thin piece of paper. Or pretty, pretty thick, pretty, so it keeps its rigidity. Kind of like poster board almost. Yeah, kind of yeah, like poster, poster board. Poster board would probably work perfect. And guys, I'm just kind of hitting a couple of more of these while I still got black in the gun before we switch to do the bullet holes. Because for the bullet holes, we got to switch colors. But while we got black in our gun, it sure would be silly to go change all that out and then have to come back with black in it, you know? Yeah, and this is a good a good thing. You'd think that would be uh, smoke in the front or... But it actually blows back, okay, guys, on a jet like this. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to change colors. Uh, no, yeah, we got to go to commercial break here. Let's see. And we don't have an exhaust on this one other than you can paint the exhaust yeah. black. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. Let's see here. Can we turn this and get Lori back here to see it? One thing I always like to do... If Lori can get in here, I don't know if we can get the lighting to do it or not, but I usually take and blow black all inside of here. Hang on. I've never seen a jet that didn't have black exhaust. Just yeah, the other thing exhaust. we can do on the exhaust, hang on, let me just grab a can of black spray paint. Did he ever answer me? No. You never answered me. Ryan, are you still in here? Mr. Ryan, are you still here? <laughs> He's intense. <laughs> Looks good. Did you get some lights? Get yeah, some we light. got one light. You see this here? This might be something you might be getting. Mm. Hint, hint. I need to know, fighter or bomber? Take it easy with this stuff, guy. guys. You can tear up an airplane pretty easy with spray paint. He's a fighter guy. He's a fighter guy. If I remember, he's a P-47 guy. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. But something I like, guys, is to black up these tails. We're getting a lot of head there. <laughs> Sorry. Wasn't trying to give head. That's what she said. There we go. You see. There you go. Just like the back end of that was dirty. Wasn't going crazy with that. Just a little bit of spray Thank under the you, exhaust. Ariel. Huh? Ariel Monsato. I probably said your name wrong, but she did a nice job. There you go. That was just a little easier than trying to paint that with that brush. The airbrush is set up to blow. This I mean, very the light. Harvard. Harvard. 86 Texan? Well, they had training commands, but uh, All right, bring back up I'm going to dress you up. All right. Let's see. Now, well, actually, I'm going to turn this around where we can do the bullet holes in a second. All right, guys, so we first just drew four little dots. I think this is the one we want. Yep, that's the one we want. Or, this or one that here. one. Whatever. Yeah. So what we've done is we've cut out our little stars. I'll show them. We've... we've but just four round dots is all we did on this. Now, let me go get another color set up in the airbrush. And we will be right back. Mr. Miller, any history uh, you want to give them from the Mary Boozer or anything while I'm gone for a few minutes? Well, I do. Well, I will say to Pilot, uh, Pilot Ryan, I'm looking forward to doing the show together with him. I'm very excited about right, that. Right, definitely. Sure, sure are. Yeah, really. Hey, if you want, real quick, if you'll sneak back there, Mr. Oh, Miller, oh, oh, and yeah. show him what's coming to Pilot Ryan. We picked it up this week. Get and we got this here. Right in front of it dance for him. <laughs> You're funny. Come on. So we do have his T-45 here. here. it is. It's old yeller. It's old, old yeller. yeller. But there um, it is. I got a smoking deal on this airplane, and uh, a bit to the side. I called Ryan and said, man, I, I think y'all could use it. He's been wanting to do it in a rest or hook for a while, so 
I think it's going to be good on his channel. But we're going to pimp it out before we send it to yep, him. It's going to be pimp. But we're going to try and save. If you've ever seen it when your airplane sets out in the hot, they'll turn yellow. And the plastic on the airplane still looks perfectly white. So what we're going to try and do is go in with the airbrush and clean that airplane up a little bit. Ryan so, says he can't wait. Yeah, guys, don't put your airplanes in a hot garage. That's the one of the worst things you can do to these is keep them in the hot. Worst thing you can do. You know, I I have a great and loving wife that let me keep it. My airplanes in the house, which, Lori, if you want to give them a sneak, you could show them our airplane room. It's kind of dirty right now, but you can see how many we actually have. Lord. And there's way more out in another room too. Just a few here. A little sneak peek of what the boozers actually have going on around here. So just, you know, covering the ceilings all the way down to the floor. Got some boats. Boats. Now the IX-12 has its own bed, pillow and everything that he sleeps with it, you know. Anyway, okay. Sneak back in here. a little bit less. Uh, what was I going to say? Dog's in here hanging out today. There's the Winter Dog. His name's Winchester. We call him Winnie. Hey, Winnie, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry. Ryan says you keep your no. planes in the bedroom with your your IX12. No, the IX12 lives in there. The airplanes aren't allowed in there. So, next color we're going to use aluminum. Lori's trying to guide my hand in the right spot. Vallejo aluminum, literally called aluminum. Um, we're going to be painting our little star shapes on the bullet holes. I missed every bit of that. Little bit. Uh, Hippie sixty four says probably has a, a bedroom just for him and the planes. Pretty right. much can't let Lori in there. Like you guys don't. Yeah. All right, guys. So she's getting you set up there. I'm going to just do some test shots here of the silver. Why are you doing that? Oh, that's okay. It's fine. I ain't hurt it at all. All right, you ready? So now we kind of pick one that looks like it's going to be about the size. We just cut these out with an X-Acto knife. Nothing special to this. It's just random little star shapes. We're going to pick one that looks about the right size. And here's the hardest part is trying to make sure, to make it's, over sure it's over the little black hole. And then you paint it. If it says it looks very nice. And then you pick a different one. Don't use the same star. Make it as random as possible. No two bullet holes are alike. That's right. They're like snowflakes. Okay. And then you're going to take and put another one. Let's see. Let me use it. Too many little, choices. Still got a little more black on that one. All right, and then this one we'll put a little star. So there they are. Okay. Now, the only thing's missing is, is the, the hole. hole. So we take a Sharpie and we put the hole right in the middle of the star or somewhere close to it. Bingo, bullet holes. I'm just spraying a little bit on there just to lighten them up just a hair. But there you go. Bullet holes. Bullet holes. Nothing fancy to them. You can also do gray. A lot of guys will do gray instead of silver, but it's a silver airplane, yeah. so there wouldn't have been nothing gray on let's it. Take, let's take the But there oil. you go. Bullet holes. Let's take the oil, turn the plane over, and show them how to blow the oil down. Okay. It works better on a World War II fighter because they lack... Yeah. Leak like crazy. I'm gonna go take this silver out of it. Well, okay. I guess it don't matter. Silver is on a silver airplane. You know, silver on the silver, you can actually do streaks with the silver, but it's getting a little crazy then if you're trying to paint silver on silver. Just for changing the color of a panel, though, you can actually take this silver. That's a little half hue. I don't even know if you'll be able to see that in the camera, but probably not. Ryan loves these how-tos. Anyway, I'm gonna go take. 
the paint out of the gun first. You don't have it. All you got to do is have the air. I know, but it's okay. the silver is very thin. Here we go again. I'm gonna have to do a song and dance again. That's right. But anyway, we talked about the art behind us. We've had several people asking about the artwork behind us. Just to go over that again, if you have, let's say you have an existing World War II patch. I suggest that you not use that patch to put it on any, that is a part of history. Any, you need to save that. So, uh, that's what started me on this, is because I had the original patch. This is actually the Boozer patch, the, the 392nd Bomb Squadron. And that's what started that. Uh, so I wanted to reproduce that patch so I could put it on an A2. That one led into another one. And a little bit of research into that. And I just kind of got interested in everything about every squadron. I just finished one that's on the, uh, one of them that uh, was uh, for the Doolittle Raiders. All so, right. Okay. So, so what we're going to do now, this is a new technique for you guys. If you'll take your airbrush, no no paint, just air is all we're going to be using right now. And then we knew. Set we my airbrush to about, oh, 30 pounds. And we're using the. The no uh, oil. And I'm going to put a drop right there. Oh, Put it in the crack if you can. Real thick. And what you're doing with this I is oil. I can't get it real. I'm trying to get it thick. thick. Okay, how about that? There we go. So this is an oil leak on the airplane. There you go. And you literally take the wind and blow it backwards on it. And this is uh, really works on World War II fighters. Yeah, we just, we don't, we're, we're not just, working on one today, but I mean. Showing you World War II fighters legs leaked everywhere. Jets, not as much, but hey, they still had oil streaks on them. And the neat thing is, is it just gives it a randomness to it. You know, the whole goal with this it's is that it be random. It's random. Weathering techniques are random. So if you just blow that down the panel, or the wing, or the motor, or whatever. And let it go. And just keep following it. Yeah, Wherever the wind took it when it was flying is it. where it went. You see how much I'm putting on there? Nice big blob. So just a, not, not a, but look how pretty Ryan it comes. we got to do a rivet show. That's good. Yeah, we can do that too. Uh, we got to do your airplane, so that could be a rivet show. And then, of course, if anybody hadn't seen that, you run this down the lines and it will it will uh, make the panel line stand out on your airplane. Okay? What you do is you run it in that crack. That's actually where the airplane was put together there, guys. But uh, mm -hmm. just randomly, and then you take this again and you do your finger like this. Boom, bye. Okay? I mean, the thing about, like Wesley says, you don't have to be really pretty with this. Oh. I mean, to uh, make it look right. Nope. Bingo. It's, and it's amazing how much that will show out. In the sun. In the sun. It it's look. hard to show you guys in here how these actually look compared to in person. Uh, the, the 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 way they show up in the actual sun hitting them, I mean, it's amazing how much different they look from in here. But uh, you you really can't go wrong with any of this weathering techniques we're showing you. You know, you can go a little too far. Too far, yeah. I've seen that. I mean, the, you got to kind of stop every once in a while. Just you take say, a step back uh, and look at it. And go, okay, that's pretty good. But you get it too far, and then you end up not having an airplane anymore. You got too much you, dirt. You got a dirt. But, uh, anyway, yeah. So the only thing we didn't show on the jet today is we didn't do the, on a prop plane, we've showed you that you start off with black on the exhaust. Right. Then we use silver. No, no, we use tan next and then silver or whatever. Uh, of course, jets didn't do that. But I think it really adds something to your airplane if you'll do the exhaust and do it in three tones. Uh, Wesley, again, if somebody wants to go and see one of those done, if you look up our, our 
YouTube page, uh, Mary Boozers RC. Look up the F7F. Yep. There's three videos on that. We, we show you the assembly. We show you the uh, putting the decals on it. We show you how I do the rivets. Not all of it, but we show you how to do the rivets. And then we also show you how to paint an exhaust on a radial engine. Or uh, Not saying it's right. That's just the way we do it. But, but uh, we've got a lot of comments on our airplanes from other RCers about what we do. And it was cool to be able to share it with you guys, you know. I, I love being able to see other guys posting their videos on either the Pilot Lounge or Motion RC or whoever it is of their airplanes all dirtied up. And, and uh, it's neat to be able to show you guys how to do it. Um, anyway, yeah. I've actually got access to your questions right now. If y'all have any questions for us, let us know right now. It's a good time for it. Yeah, we'd like to know what you like about our videos, what you don't like about our videos. Is there any questions you have about this airplane? Something we could show you that you want to see on it? We haven't put the receiver in it yet, so we can't put the gear down on it. We haven't flew it, but we understand it flies great. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's probably one of the best. Everybody we've there. talked to says this is just a phenomenal airplane. But Wesley hit on a point, guys. You know, I've been in RC for a long time, and it was really gratifying to learn how to fly an RC airplane. I mean, I guess that was my first gratification. But you take it to a certain place, and you want to build on your modeling experience. So where I got a lot of really pleasure was doing the, and this was back when you had to build them from scratch, and you had to do all this yourself from the wood up. But I really got to where I'd love to do the extras. It just added to my hobby, the, the, what we're doing here. Uh, of course, you know, somebody says, well, I can't do that because all I do is crash it the next day. Well, you have to take your skill levels to a certain point before you start doing this, yes. But, I mean, I really get enjoyment out of the, uh, the, the tinkering with them after the fact. Like I said, anyway... I I'm doing what I'm doing right now is the access panels. Most folks talk the ESC. Put the battery all the way back in here, Brian. Let me open this up. Oh, it goes all the way back here. Yeah, I remember his video. So the, the, the you're saying to put the battery here, Ryan? All the way against, yeah. Heck, there's a battery yep. in there. Yep, that's, that's what, what you're saying. Okay. It looks like the ES3 is already back, or the yeah, ESC and, and, strap and is already back That's another thing, guys. Uh, 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 you need to look, if you really want to see the correct way to set one up on uh, Pilot, Pilot Ryan. Ryan has been doing it for the been motion doing guys it forever. forever. If, if he says a, a no, little bit of strap, set it. Oh, we or the escape. Yeah, but if he says to do something, I tell he, you. He usually you, knows exactly you, you what he's talking about. You watch his videos. If you if you want to know how to fly, uh, set one of these airplanes up to fly correctly, uh, go to their Set channel. it over the ESC. Really? Here, hang on. Really? Over. Boy, that's back there all the way. Ah, I got a battery. Put this to the test. Go. So, Ryan, you're saying that we should put our battery... Almost he here. Nose heavy in the videos. That's why he says to do that. Way back there. Like over, that? over that. Or in front of that. That's a thirty-three hundred. Sorry, it's just what I grabbed first. Like that, or all way back here. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right there on top of the ESC. Okay. okay. Well, we'll all give right. it a shot. All right. If you're saying that's where it needs to be, you've yeah, probably yeah. flown on a whole lot more, more than, than me. We have. Well, there you go, guys. Anybody that was in here got to learn that little tip, too. Yep. Right. Along with us. So that's the fun, guys. That's the fun of this sport. Work it's together. Sharing your experiences. For the maiden split the difference. Right. Okay. For the maiden split the difference. See where, see where it would yeah, work okay. good for you. 
I remember I, all I remember on his video is that he forgot to turn the his rights up or down. He had to have all the rights, and he kind of binked it because he didn't have all didn't full, have full enough rights on the elevator. Didn't have enough when you, yeah, yeah. Well, that might have been from being nose heavy too, though. Whatever, but I mean, yep. I, that's the only thing he recommended on his video is that make sure you land it with. Well, we'll check out that recommendation, uh, and if, if uh, that works out good for us, we'll definitely put that in our flight video. This Did it'll be coming in a few weeks. We've got we've got four or five videos right now actually set and ready to go up. So did we've somebody, got a lot of flights lately. Did somebody recognize that we had some lights? Uh, yeah, right, right. Okay, good. We we were kind of in the Being dark for a while. Forty, I was nose heavy. Yeah, I see that, Ryan. I understand it, man. And I like to fly my airplanes with a lot less throat than a lot of people recommend in the books. You know, motion and everybody, it seems like there's so much throw on the high rates most of the time. And I don't like that. I mean, I don't bank and yank mine really hard. I like to fly scale, and, and it seems like there's more throw usually gets you in more trouble as you get into the slower speeds. You can really get one oscillating or stall it and wing over or whatever. And I've found over time that just cutting the, the elevator throw down, I hardly ever set my radio over 80%. Mostly it's 65% uh, elevator travel on a spectrum is about where mine end up usually. Yeah, um, a flying airplane that the CG it's tail heavy and you got too much elevator and see what you get. Yeah. You're going to have fun. We <laughs> done it. It's uh, exciting. Done it. You you but sometimes you don't save them very often. Yeah. Uh, but so yeah, the big thing guys is make sure you know where the CG is and you get it pretty close. And the only other thing I say is and I've said this to Wesley after he says all warbirds like the, the, I like I like a hundred percent on the ailerons, but you can really get in trouble with the elevator. So they can end up in the dirt. So well, I mean they just get too sensitive. Ryan, this is a DX6E. Just so you know, if you haven't seen the new one, so 250 model memory, three-way position switches. This is a great first radio. Anyway. Just wanted to throw that one out there. It was right uh, here. Wesley had to do a video on Spectrum Radio. <laughs> I did. So look and see what. Look forward to seeing that one yeah. coming up. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be coming out pretty soon, actually. Today. So. Anybody have any comments of what else they would like to see us do up to in this the airplane? Dirt. <laughs> yep. That's right. That's right. Any, anything else, guys? Uh, questions, concerns? <laughs> you like that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and here's a DXE. Got that too. We got them all, man. So this is the one you're thinking about that's only good for one airplane. Nah, don't just pass on that one. As I told Wesley, uh, pick it up and you know it's <laughs> it's very <laughs> lightweight. Much, there's yeah. not much radio there. Uh, I don't think light. I'd re recommend that one to many people. Well, guys, I think we got it about done for the day. You know, we're flipping over and do the bottom here in a little bit and some other things, but. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it, getting a closer view of the F-86 and kind of getting the walk around and maybe you learned some more stuff this week you can try. Uh, on the black and the stars, you can always do black and gray if you don't have silver. Silver's kind of a harder color to find for your uh, bullet holes in the Vallejo colors. So if, if you don't have access to it, most of their starter kits are going to come with a gray. Did, you can always do gray instead. Did your wiping goals come out with nope. the dulling? So that this is an original. Well, this is one of their original paints um, on this F86, and this one doesn't rub off like most of them do if you hit them with alcohol. So this must be a different formula yeah, we they were, were using we, on this airplane when they painted it. We did the uh, the P40 FMS P47 the other day, and, and you could take a little well, bit of rubbing you could alcohol, rub it and, it would dull and it you could harshly. dull it right off on a panel, but you couldn't do it on this one, so. Like I said, this is one of their original airplanes. They've been making this one forever. So I guess the paint formula on this one is some good stuff. You know, again, guys, this thing has some fantastic uh, finishes. Fit and finish is great on this airplane for a foamy. Comes with the stickers on it, too, um, right yeah, out of the box. Yeah, it comes You know, don't even put the stickers on it. It comes it's just like this neat. out of the box. Yeah. Uh, and... And it's got to be a great flying airplane. It's been around too long. Yeah, yeah. They don't usually last this long if they're well. I, I don't know. I've seen some of those LX planes that have been around forever. That 
Uh, That's all we're going to say about the LX plates. Uh, 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 hold on just a minute. i got to show, show Ryan something. All right. <laughs> I'm scared. Y'all want to see my new airplane? Maybe? All right, we'll just follow him. How's that? It's right here. Ah, right there. Look at that airplane. Oh, wait, yeah. Dad wanted to show you his, oh, his uh, right right from the, uh, there, it's, it's look at that, a GWS hey, Look at that. Ask me what kind of plane to fly <laughs> the first time. He there got it, it right from the AMA uh, museum. museum. It was hanging up off the ceiling. He said, oh, I always wanted one. <laughs> yeah, not everybody's in the museum. Look at that. <laughs> But the first airplane I ever built was a Balsa USA stick that uh, had a 40 gas, and it was just like this. It took a two-stroke 40, and it only had a rudder and an elevator, and you threw it in the air is what I learned how to fly on. Actually, Balsa USA actually made a stick, and it did not have ailerons. It had elevator and rudder. Yeah, anybody that was in the pilot lounge last night, he... Pilot Ryan asked what Dad thought was his best first airplane, and Dad said it was a stick, and Ryan said, I didn't think they had those except for in the museums anymore. So we got a kick out of that. But actually, I have one. Joel has one. Uh, a bunch of our friends here have them, and you can still get them on eBay for, this is ridiculous, but they're about 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, he said, if you want to know what... Adverse y'all is put ailerons on one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, the stick. The stick. Yeah, I, sold, I, sold, I finally sold my stick to a uh, guy here, and uh, he's always on our web page, and he's always uh, uh, saying he's flying his stick. His stick. His stick. stick. Uh, but he loves it. He I mean, loves you know, it, though. It, you know, the only thing about that thing is, is that you can't fly it in a whole lot of well. Uh, uh, wind, but uh, in Florida, the, in Florida, it's pretty good. Have yeah, we, we normally have five to ten. Today was a little crazy. You'll see in our video of the FMS P47. <laughs> it uh, it was about fifteen to twenty today, and uh, direct crosswind. So it was it was exciting flying today on that P47. But it's back in one piece, kinda. We broke one gear door, but it was very minor. And Lori and Wesley fired me from taking videos. I can't do the slow mos anymore because I, I don't know what's on. On and, what's and off, off on the camera. That's twice. Turn it off to turn it on. And turn I mean, it on to turn it off. You know. We get I, lots of slow mo of his feet. Got a lot, yeah. We got a lot of slow mo of his feet today. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I will put that in there. Lori's always giving me she, my, my outtakes. That's right. Lori loves her outtakes when she does the editing, but. Uh, Guys, thanks, thanks for coming and checking out the videos today. Uh, we really enjoy you guys coming. We, we, we appreciate you taking time out of your Sundays to come by our channel and, and uh, watch it with us. I've been a little under the weather lately, so I, if I'm a little quieter than normal and not talking as good to you guys. Now, Lori says I'm still just as obnoxiously loud as always. I have a voice that carries for miles. It, it's funny. I can go he to gets a it from his mother. We can go to a restaurant, and my dad can hear me over anybody in that restaurant. I don't care who we're talking to. So, we did get our new microphones on the camera, so hopefully it sounds really good to you guys. I know definitely when we got out to the field today and we're recording, we have the dead kitten for the microphones now, and that has helped tremendously. So, hopefully no more wind noises when you're listening. Um, anyway, just better quality every day on our channel. We've uh, got our bigger camera, our Canon Vixia that we got from uh, Ryan pretty figured out now. It normally stays in very good focus. Uh, we've been really happy with the little camera since we got it. The uh, one thing we added to it was a bigger microphone. So if you're looking to kind of get into this and, and uh, do, the, do the video thing, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, like I said, we've got here, Lori's bringing them over. So we bought this camera right here. The Canon Vixia, you just pop it out, start filming, and then she, we got a microphone for it this week too. It pops on the bottom. There's a little thing that goes on here, so hopefully y'all can hear us a little better. But great little camera, zoom on the top. We've really been having a good time with this. So it seems like that's our thing. We really like to do the flight videos. Yeah, we like flying them, you know. But what we'd really like to know from you guys is what do we need? What do you want to see? Yeah. What are we doing wrong? 
Give what kind some, of what kind yeah, of everybody says that, but we'd really like to know. What kind of tutorials do you want? You know, we've been doing it for a while and, and it, half of the battle is trying to figure out what to make for you guys. Um painting's always fun, but after you see us do about five of these you're probably gonna be like, We want something other than painting on your live show, but now I do have well, one thing that I'm going to have in the future is the conversion of a gas airplane over to a. Oh yeah, you want to see a neat airplane? So and then I've actually did here. one. It was my first one, and I kind of went to extreme. Uh, it's it's a rather large airplane. Wesley had this motor that he'd swap somebody oh. for. If I remember right, it has a hundred ESC in it. Look at this and, electric airplane if and, you want to see a big one. Yeah, and I converted this over to electric. And it flies phenomenal. It's one of my old gas airplanes. Here, it, give me that one. It was originally a Talk one... Talk about that for a minute. It, it, it originally was a one twenty. Oh, we're going to hand this out there. Okay, it was a, originally a 120 gasser. It's got it's a, what's called a Pete and Paul. It's a high wing, and it's got something like an eight-foot wingspan on it. But hey, it really turned out better or worse with this light, guys. I, I, oh, better, definitely better. It's got one honker of a motor on the front of it. It's equal to a 180, but it converted over very well. All I had to do is take the uh, the mounting uh, uh, struts out of the front where you mounted the hardware on there for the gas engine, cut them out. Made me another bulkhead where it would match up to the front. Uh, and then it had this huge yep. compartment in front for the uh, gas tank, which was really easy to convert it over. It, we're flying this right now on a, on a 6-cell 5,000. This, this thing can take up to 10 cells, 10, 8, or 6 cells. And... Uh, we Rick. will. Uh, Ryan, we were just giving you a little sneak peek of it. He was wanting to show on this one. What's that? On this airplane. Just a little sneak, sneak peek. peek. You, you don't got to go over everything, do you? Well, I mean, this is you know, just to let you know. But, I mean, you can make, you can make a big airplane. one of these on to convert. I mean, right. there's where we put the battery right there, and I didn't do anything. So, guys, uh, you know, if you got some of those old wood airplanes around, uh, don't think that they can only be gas. Because here's proof that they they won't. And it and it flies for like hold on, Wesley. Uh, I think we get six, seven minutes on I this thing. It was longer than that, but anyway. We might. Uh, it it flies a very long time for as plane as big as it is. Um, this airplane's got a nine foot wing. It's Something I mean like it's, it's it's huge. Hits the ceiling in here if I stand it up. It's, it's taller it's than huge. me. It's, yeah. I'm six foot and it's at least two foot taller than I am. But then again, all I did was, after I put the motor in, and you know the old four-stroke 120 would be stocking up there, I just made this, to, and it's held on with the uh, magnets. Magnets, bingo. And and the funny part is, hi Ryan. This was this engine and that spinner. See you later, Ryan. Was off of a old albatross. Yep, that was actually the uh, E Flight albatross that we stole the spinner off of. For this gigantic airplane, but it happened to work out. Lori, look at the front and tell me if this looks good. It actually happened to work out perfect. That's actually the E Flight 1200 millimeter Albatross that we stole that spinner off of, and then I ordered that wood prop online, and it came out really neat. So, anyway, I'm gonna put this one back away. We, we, we're about at the end. Well, yeah, here, yeah. we'll leave it here. Um, I think we're coming up to the end, guys, unless y'all have any questions for us today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you could learn a little something today again. <laughs> Sorry I'm sick a little bit, and the cough keeps coming up, but uh, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Wait a minute, let's make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hippie64 is commenting right now. Yeah, he says it's great we're doing it as a family. <laughs> and then Pilot Ryan says we need to do a whole show on yep, this. Yep, yep. Which we plan on. Uh, hey, it's Homeboy. Homeboy. Killer. Almost at the end of the, the live stream. If you got any questions for us, you feel fire away right now. It's a good time. We'll definitely be doing more like this. Yeah, we're going to do more live streams. Um, I'm working a, a pretty crazy job right now. I'm only home about two nights a week. 
So it's making it a little harder for me to make the videos right now, but as, as much as I possibly can, I, I'm loving it every time I get a chance to make a video with you guys and share it. And uh, You can always reach out to us on Facebook also. We have the Facebook Mary Boozer's page. Um, I'm currently making a Facebook profile so you guys can add me as a friend on there because I don't really want to do it on my personal account. It's just kind of something that I want to do. Um, Photons home the other time. The live video today was on our F86. We've actually already finished painting it, and right now we're just kind of catching up on some questions for you guys, phone boys. Um, as soon as it's over today, though, you can hit the replay and watch the uh, F86 again. And we'll be glad to put it back in the uh, video again. Oh. I don't know how long this video has been. How long has it been? Right, well, wait, an we, we, it, it, right at an hour. So, right uh, at an hour. So we did, we did pretty good. Yeah, we did pretty good. So uh, we, we run out of the thing to say, guys. Just like and subscribe to our channel, uh, Mary Boozers. And... Uh, you guys that jumped right in at the end, I'll put the airplane in here one more second. Just yeah, so y'all can see it. Yeah. Finished up. Unless you want to just come back and Because we are it. enjoying what we're doing, guys. And I hope you are, too. So we got the F-86 all painted up today. Hopefully you like it if you're coming in here at the end. We did our bullet holes. We did streaks everywhere again. We stripped up the bottom, put some oil stains, oil stains on the bottom. Where, it, uh, where it dripped all the way through. We showed just you how to do that. Um, just and you know that's kind of easy. We we did the. It's Woo! A, you almost hit yeah. me in the face with that tail. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> anyway, it's getting dangerous in here. This is part of it, guys. I hope you enjoy doing this. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, thanks for coming by. I'll leave comments if y'all got any questions on anything for us. I, I'm always around the phone. I'll be glad to answer them for you. Uh, you can message us on Facebook, uh, on the YouTube channel, wherever. So, Yeah, we like to hear from you. Yeah, we love it. And he's got an account going now, so if you hear from him on any of our live streams or stuff that we're in, it's Papa Boozer. My wife behind the camera, she's Mrs. Boozer. So... Thanks for coming out, guys. Uh, yep. Tell your friends about us. We're trying to get into the, get this channel going. I want to do a giveaway here in the next couple weeks. Um, when we get around 250 subscribers, I'm, I'm looking at doing some kind of small giveaway for you guys. Uh, just to say thank you for the initial people that have got into this. As we get closer to five or 600 subscribers, we'll probably do some kind of airplane giveaway on the channel. So. You're right. That's anyway, good stuff. we're going to let y'all go. Say bye to them. We do got our shirts on. Later, too, guys. We had too. our shirts on. Our Mary Boozer. Yeah, our Mary Boozer shirts. We're, we're going to be getting some new ones. They they kind of got messed. They up got messed bit. up in the printing. If you can't see it here, right? I think she's right behind me. Yeah, I can see, it. see the, the blue. They're blue on the bottom half, which is kind of weird. So, and on the front, we did I'm a Boozer. So that's what we're thinking for uh, doing on Teespring. I'm working with Ryan right now and making some T-shirts through there. Um, hopefully I'll like them. If y'all think it's something y'all want to have, we're going to put them on there. Either way, you can buy them or not. It's up to you guys. That's the fun of this. So, all right, we're going to let you go. Signing out of here.